Hello everybody and welcome back in the shop. I want to talk with you. Now I was never intending to say or admit that of course, but things are a bit different now from what I expected. I cannot sleep at nights and therefore I cannot concentrate at mornings. My life is a mess, so I decided to come clean. Now there is no easy way to put this, so I will shoot straight ahead. I am a fraud. I tricked you into believing that this machine runs on Marlin, just to get your attention and make you believe it is open source, it is awesome, and I am a small tiny part of this great community out there, and all those cool stuff. While in reality, it runs on Mac 3. There. But just in case you are new here and you don't know how painful of a troll I can become sometimes, I don't know. Welcome aboard. This machine is all Marlin. Last week we made the fourth axis for it and also gave it a try. Today we make something fancier. Okay, we have some round pieces of stock and we are ready to roll. I turned the plug here at the end because I am using a chuck that only goes up to 10 mm. Now, as you may know already, in order to perform any kind of CNC operation, you need a piece of G code. It is the machine language. It is a file that contains all the movements your CNC should do to give you whatever the heck you are making this time. And when it comes to acquiring your G code, there are pretty much just two options. Either you have balls of steel and tons of time and you go make it yourself. I mean you just open your notepad and make it from scratch. Or you let a piece of software do all the dirty work. Now if you're gonna perform a 3-axis milling operation, this should not be a problem. There are plenty of awesome pieces of software out there where you could easily get your code. But you know, we kinda have four of them now. And this can be a problem. And it's not that I don't have the balls of steel. They are there. But I'm a little bit short on time. I'm not saying that there aren't CAM programs which can handle 4 or 5 or whatever number of axis machining, but the cheapest one of them would probably cost right about the same as this CNC machine. And the drill press, the lathe, and this heater, all the paint, and my right kidney. But you know, this is a hobby to me, and I'm also kinda lazy, and I'd prefer to keep both my kidneys. So I will now get rid of the 4th axis setup, thanks for watching and have a nice one. Nah, don't worry, there are ways around this. Let's have a look. Now the way we are gonna use here today is exactly that, around this. We will take an ordinary piece of G-code, I mean a flat one, 3 axis milling, and we are gonna wrap this around our cylinder. Here I have my piece of G-code, which I used easily to make. It is a tiki mask, and it is a complete piece of G-code. So if I use that as it is right now, I could carve that mask on a board, like this one. That's typical stuff. Now we need to wrap this around the cylinder. And here comes an awesome guy named Scorch, and his site scorchworks.com. From there you can download this tool that he developed, named G-Code Reaper. And using this you could do quite a lot of useful stuff, but amongst them there is also what we are after here. Wrapping G-Code. Using this feature you could take whatever piece of G-Code you have made, with whatever CAM program you prefer, and wrap it around the cylinder, with the dimensions of your liking. There.
Now, do you remember how I told you that the rotor axis on such cases are usually called A or B? And that's exactly what Scorch did. So in my case, where my rotary sits perpendicular to my x-axis, I'd choose this option here. Y to A axis. I'd hit this button to generate and save my wrapped G code, and I would end up with a file full of orders for the A axis to move. But my A in this case is called E, as we saw earlier. So once again we have a problem. And this time there are three solutions. First one, you open the wrapped G code file we just generated and you replace every A you find in there with an E. But this is not fun. Second one, you modify your Marlin version to rename the rotary from E to A. And while this should not be hard to do, it may take some time. I can only imagine how many compiling errors you would have until you find every last D written in there. Option 3. This one involves another awesome guy, Leo69. He made MPCNC. If you have a look on my screen, again this is Scorch's program. But this time there are also some options referring to us. Guys with a fourth axis named E. Marlin guys. I'm going with this one. Y to E. And the reason you can find these extra options in this version of Gcode Reaper is written up there on the header. Gcode Reaper version 0.11 modification for MPCNC by Leo69. So Leo, having some skills on coding in Python and trying himself to squeeze a meal out of a Marlin setup, modified Scorch's program to give us those extra options. If you ever watch this, thank you both guys. I really appreciate that. Now let's make our code. There. And that's pretty much how it goes. I know I said we're making something fancier today, and maybe you don't consider this being too fancy. But hey, look, it is written on the back. Using a VCAR to put this image up there would look much better. But given that I mounted the chuck directly to my stepper, and I'm not using any reduction at all, I'm a little bit short on torque. And I decided to play it safe. Using those bits can give you quite some load. Another thing that you may have noticed is this one. Using this approach, wrapping your flat G code, gives you an operation that is not really a 4-axis one. Our Y never moved while making this. But, you know, kidneys. So I believe that's all for today folks. Any links on the software used here you can find in the video description. Until next time, thank you all for being here and have a nice one.